In this video, I'm going to give a short demo of the undefined behavior sanitizer. This is a code sanitizer that's supported by both the GCC and Clang C++ compilers. And what this code sanitizer does is it checks for various types of undefined behavior in your program. So in this particular case, I'm going to use a code example, which is from a repository on GitHub. This is a publicly accessible repository. So if you want, you can uh, download you know, clone this repository on your own and work through the example yourself. So first I'll clone the repository. The particular code example I want to look at is in this subdirectory of the repository. So I'm going to change directories to here. If we look at what's in this directory, there's a couple files. Uh, so if we look at the individual files, we have a C++ source code file, which is essentially a program for computing a factorial of a number. Uh, it defaults to a value of 13 if you don't specify in the command line what number to compute the factorial of, um, and then it prints the factorial. Not a very interesting program, but it serves my purposes for this demo. If we go to the uh, CMakeList file, there's nothing particularly noteworthy here. It's just your regular run-of-the-mill CMakeList file without too many bells and whistles. So I'm going to use CMake to build the program first. So I'll do the configuration stage of CMake first. And I'm going to specify a build type of debug. And then we actually do the building part, the build phase of CMake. And I've used uh, this subdirectory called temp underscore CMake to store the result of the build. So I'm going to run the factorial program now. And it says it's computing 13 factorial, and it prints out the result. Um, this program, though, has undefined behavior. Um, if you actually look more carefully, the number that's printed as the result of 13 factorial is, is definitely wrong. Um, essentially, what's happened is there's been signed integer overflow in the program. I mean, there's not really too many things that can go wrong with the factorial program that we've written. If you look at it here, there's you know not many possibilities of undefined behavior in this program. Um, but what can happen is that uh, we're using signed integers for doing the computation of the factorial and the integer arithmetic can overflow and this is what's happened. Um, and part of a bigger program though, actually it can be sometimes quite tricky to detect integer overflow. Um, so tools that can help you to detect this as well as other types of undefined behavior. There's many, many different types of undefined behavior and the undefined behavior sanitizer checks for quite a few of them. Not all of them, but it checks for quite a few. Um, so let's actually go back to our CMake list file. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a few extra lines to it, which will enable the undefined behavior sanitizer. So these, these uh, two new lines here that I've added, uh, essentially what we're doing is uh, this variable here is specifying extra compiler flags that are used when you're compiling. And this variable here in CMake is used for specifying extra linker flags. So what I'm doing here effectively is appending to the list of compiler flags this minus f sanitize equals undefined. And I'm appending onto the list of the linker flags the same option. And basically, this option is needed for both the compiler and linker. And it just specifies to enable the undefined behavior sanitizer. So I'll save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild my program. But now with my new CMake list file, one that's going to enable the undefined, behave, undefined behavior sanitizer. So I do the configure stage of CMake and then the build stage. And then I'm going to run my program again. And this time when I run it, you'll notice that it, it it's printing a, an error message. They send it the extra code that's basically when you use the undefined behavior sanitizer, part of what it does is the compiler will instrument your code with extra checks. For example, every time you're doing signed integer arithmetic, it checks for overflow and it will basically print a message if overflow occurs. In this particular case, it's saying it's, it's detected signed integer overflow. Um, it's even told me the particular line in my program where the, the signed integer overflow has occurred. It said line 8 on in this the source code file factorial.cpp. So if I go back to the source code file, go to line 8, which is this line here, you can see I'm doing an integer multiplication operation. And basically, this integer multiplies overflowing. Um, again, this is kind of a very simple code example here. Um, so it would be probably pretty easy to, when things are not working to figure out that integer overflow has occurred on that particular line. But if you imagine that you have a very large program that's doing a lot of integer arithmetic, and, and 
there's lots of other possibilities of other bugs and things aren't working this can be a very nice way to be able to detect the fact that you have you know int signed integer overflow or many other types of things as well like there's quite a few different types of checks that are done by this code sanitizer so I highly recommend its use